Hello students, uh, in today's video we will discuss pharmacology of uh, thiazide and uh, related diuretics. Now before starting discussing thiazides and uh, related diuretics, uh, let's uh, first quickly revise function of kidneys and the role of diuretics. Now uh, look at this diagram. Uh, this diagram shows a uh, structure of nephron and uh, these are the uh, peritubular capillaries and these peritubular capillaries are also termed as vasa recta. Now the most important function of kidneys is to filter and purify blood and remove waste toxic products of the body in the form of urine. Now structural and functional unit of kidney is the nephron. Now each kidney consists of around 1 million nef nephrons and the main function of kidney is to produce urine. Now there are three main steps in the formation of urine namely the glomerular filtration then selective reabsorption and secretion. Now blood in the glomerulus is filtered and the filtrate passes into the tubule of nephron. Now around 180 liters of filtrate is produced daily by both the kidneys. Now this filtrate uh, consists of more than 90% water, uh, then waste toxic products like urea, uric acid, creatinine along with the useful substances like glucose, amino acids, uh, vitamins, electrolytes like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium etc. Now all these essential substances uh, that are required along with the water is reabsorbed. Uh, it is reabsorbed from the uh, lumen into the luminal epithelial cells and from the luminal epithelial cells all the required substances they move to the peritubular capillaries or vasa recta and thus all these required substances they reach the blood circulation. Now, thus around 99% of the filtrate uh, is returned to the blood circulation and this reabsorption of filtrate maintains the blood volume and uh, the pH of blood. Now, reabsorption of water primarily depends on the reabsorption of sodium. Now, water is reabsorbed isoosmotically. That is for every molecule of sodium that is reabsorbed is accompanied by reabsorption of molecule of water. And thus, when the sodium is reabsorbed, uh, the water follows. Uh, that means water follows higher sodium concentration. Now, very important to remember that uh, out of 180 liter of filtrate, only 1 to 1.5 liter of urine is produced. That means uh, rest uh, of the filtrate that is 99% of the filtrate is reabsorbed um, in this uh, renal tubule. At the different sites like uh, the proximal convoluted tubule here uh, 65 to 70% of sodium and water is uh, uh, reabsorbed. Uh, then this is the descending loop of Henle here 15% of uh, water is reabsorbed. Uh, this is the ascending limb of uh, loop of Henle here around 25% of uh, sodium is reabsorbed. Now this is the early distal tubule here uh, around 5% of sodium and 8% of uh, uh, the content uh, water content of the filtrate is uh, reabsorbed. Uh, now this is the late uh, distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct here around 3% of uh, uh, sodium is absorbed and apart from this water is also absorbed. Now absorption of uh, water is tightly regulated by antidiuretic hormone in the collecting duct whereas absorption reabsorption of sodium is regulated by the aldosterone. So this is how um, at different sites uh, water and uh, sodium is reabsorbed from the renal tubule into the renal uh, into the luminal epithelial cells. And from the luminal epithelial cells, sodium along with the water moves into the peritubular capillaries or vasa recta. And from here, uh, sodium as well as water, they reach the blood circulation. And this is how the blood volume and the pH of blood is maintained. Now, uh, diuretics are the agents that uh, act upon kidney uh, and they increase the volume of urine, thereby reducing the volume of blood. Now, 
uh, what di uh, diuretics uh, do is this that di diuretics decrease uh, the reabsorption of uh, sodium as well as the reabsorption of water from the lumen into the peritubular capillaries. Thus diuretics are the agents that uh, cause net loss of sodium and water in the urine. Now since these diuretics they increase the volume of urine, they reduce the volume of blood, they are primarily useful in the management of edema and hypertension. Uh, so now uh, let's talk about the thiazide and related diuretics. These are classified as uh, thiazides and thiazide-like uh, diuretics. Now thiazides include hydrochlorothiazide, benzthiazide, then hydroflumethiazide, bendroflumethiazide. Now thiazide-like uh, thiazide-like diuretics are so called because these diuretics do not possess thiazide chemical structure, but their mechanism of action, pharmacological actions, their entire pharmacology is similar to those of thiazides. Now these thiazide-like diuretics they include uh, chlorthalidone, metolazone, uh, then zepamide, indepamide, clopamide. Now out of all these diuretics hydrochlorothiazide then chlorthalidone and indepamide are the commonly used uh, diuretics. Now primary site of action of these drug is the distal convoluted tubule and these diuretics inhibit sodium chloride symport at the luminal membrane located at early distal tubule. Uh, since they inhibit sodium chloride symport they inhibit reabsorption of sodium and chloride from the filtrate into the luminal epithelial cells and these are moderately efficacious diuretics now these are moderately efficacious diuretics as the 90 percent of the glomerular filtrate is already reabsorbed before it reaches the uh, last part of the uh, nephron that is the distal tubule now extra renal action of thiazides and thiazide like diuretics include uh, they are found to cause gradual uh, fall in the blood pressure in hypertensives. Now as we all know diuretics they reduce the blood volume. Uh, they reduce the blood volume thereby reducing the cardiac output and as we all know blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into peripheral resistance fall in the blood volume reduces cardiac output and that reduces the blood pressure and therefore these are used in the treatment of hypertension. Now these diuretics especially uh, chlorthalidone uh, are the first line drugs in the management of hypertension. Now apart from this uh, these drugs also elevate uh, blood sugar in some cases uh, due to the fall in the secretion or release of insulin and this is probably uh, a consequence of hypokalemia caused by these drugs. Now all these drugs are well absorbed orally there is no injectable preparation of these drugs and uh, these drugs uh, or these diuretics produce their diuretic effect within one hour while duration of action varies uh, from 6 to 48 hours uh, depending upon the diuretic. Like for example chlorthalidone is long acting uh, its duration of action is uh, 48 hours and it is used exclusively as antihypertensive. Uh, now let's understand mechanism of action of thiazides and related diuretics. Now the site of action is the early distal convoluted tubule. Now very important to remember that in early distal convoluted tubule around 5 to 10 percent of sodium from the filtrate is reabsorbed. Now look at this diagram. Uh, this diagram shows the lumen where the filtrate is present. This is a luminal epithelial cell of uh, early distal convoluted tubule. It has two surfaces, apical surface towards the lumen, whereas the basolateral surface close to the peritubular capillaries or vasa recta. Now thiazides inhibit sodium chloride symport, thereby inhibiting reabsorption of sodium from the filtrate into the luminal epithelial cells. And this causes fall in the level of sodium in the peritubular capillaries. Now since sodium is not reabsorbed, it moves forward along with the filtrate and this loss of sodium exerts the diuretic effect. 
So thiazides and related diuretics inhibit sodium chloride import and exert diuretic effect. Apart from this, thiazide diuretics also increase calcium reabsorption. Now let's see the mechanism. Now, since the thiazides and related diuretics block sodium chloride import, uh, they produce fall in the concentration of sodium in the uh, epithelial cell since they are inhibiting the reabsorption of sodium. Now, since uh, there is fall in the concentration of sodium in the cell, thiazides indirectly increase the activity of sodium calcium antiporter so that sodium is transported from the blood to the epithelial cells. This maintains the uh, intracellular sodium levels. So the increased activity of sodium calcium antiporter on one hand increases sodium in the epithelial cell while on the other hand it increases calcium in the blood that is in the peritubular capillaries. And further to this since the calcium is moving from the cell from the epithelial cell to the uh, blood, uh, there is a fall in the level of calcium in the epithelial cell and this fall in the level of calcium in the epithelial cell increases reabsorption of calcium from the filtrate. So these drugs, they indirectly increase the activity of uh, sodium calcium antiporter so that uh, sodium concentration is uh, concentration is maintained in the epithelial cells whereas on the other hand it leads to the increased concentration of calcium in the peritubular capillaries or the blood. So thiazides and the related drugs they increase calcium in the blood. Now uh, let's talk about the um, indications of uh, thiazides and related diuretics. Now as discussed earlier these drugs are found to be useful in the management of uh, primary hypertension. Now as uh, adjuvants or as additional drugs they are used in the management of edema associated with chronic heart failure, corticosteroid and estrogen therapy. Uh, these diuretics are also found to be effective in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Apart from this, since uh, these diuretics reduce calcium excretion, they are also useful in the management of uh, hypercalcemia with recurrent calcium stones in the kidney. Uh, now let's understand the adverse effects of uh, thiazides and related diuretics. Now hypokalemia or low potassium in blood is the major adverse effects of these diuretics. Now since these diuretics inhibit reabsorption of sodium in early distal convoluted tubule, sodium is passed in the filtrate. But this sodium is effectively reabsorbed in late distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct in exchange of potassium. So potassium is excreted and this results in hypokalemia. Now hypokalemia can be life-threatening and requires monitoring during first uh, two to three weeks of therapy. Now loss of sodium can cause hyponatremia. Then uh, metabolic uh, alkalosis can also occur uh, due to increase in aldosterone mediated uh, potassium and hydrogen ion secretion in the collecting duct. Now apart from this, as uh, discussed earlier, uh, these diuretics can cause hypercalcemia. Another uh, side effect is the hyperuricemia. Now as the thiazides are sulfur containing drugs, they can cause sulfur allergies like headache, uh, rashes, difficulty in breathing, anaphylaxis, uh, etc. So this is in brief on the pharmacology of uh, thiazides and related diuretics. Now please note that the information provided in this video is meant exclusively for students from their examination point of view. So kindly consult your physician for the clinical use of diuretics. Now if you find the video useful kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.